over an introduction of yourself. Okay, um, my name is Taiwo Bankolen. Um, graduate of accountancy. I read accounting. Event planner. I'm into events. I run Strictly Events NG, which means Strictly Events Nigeria. I own drinks and bus company. It's a, um, it's a drinks company. We do sales services of drinks. An accountant. Then looking at event planning and um, running uh, a drinks um, company, something like that. How come? Well, it is what it is. You know, you know the situation of the country. So I, I, I've started that since I was in school. Since I mean, since I was in school, I started doing it even before I graduated. It's something I've been doing for a very long time. So when I graduated. I was writing my ACC at the same time, still merging it with my events and my drinks business. And yeah, I am today. Now, so far, um, for how long uh, have you been into business? That's a very long time ago. I started drinks and all, 20, 2007. A very long time. I started with drinks at first. So I noticed that whenever I go out to cater for drinks, my very first big job was Abraham Adesoya, late Abraham Adesoya, president of, of the Blessed Memorial. Yeah, we had it in the gym. And I noticed that whenever I go for events, people will come and ask me, Oh, I'm sorry, do you know where we can get this? Do you know where we can get this? Even my friends, my colleagues, sometimes they do ask me, Oh, Taiwo can we be able to sort for this, we'll be able to sort for rentals, we'll be able so I just felt oh if everybody could be asking me, oh uh, Taiwo, where can we and I always get it done. So I just I didn't switch, I just met both together. But I started with drinks 2007. And it's a registered business. It's been on from, it's been registered since 20, 2008, sorry, okay. till date. Wow, 2008, that is about um, 14 years. 14 years. That's so, that's a very long, is a long time. It's a long time, I'll say. So, how have you been? Well, the journey at first was very, you know how business are? The journey at first, because I started when I was in uni. The journey as well wasn't that really smooth. Sometimes we go out, we go out to work. At the end of the day, when we are coming back, you could be, to even count your gain, you'll be like, oh, well, you know, those are the price we've paid. But now, I mean, it's been, it's been great. But at the beginning, it was a little bit rough. I wouldn't like all that. But now, I could say, yes, it's been very great. Now, about the Strictly Events brand, I want you to tell me more about what you offer. Well, Strictly Event Planning is a planning company. We do uh, for corporates, we do weddings, we do birthdays, we do burials. We offer all kinds, we sort for vendors. So apart from having our own decor company, apart from having our own ushering outfit, uh, we have our own drinks. We sort out for caterers, we sort out for planning in general. That's what we do. Now, uh, the summary of it is um, is a creative um, thing. Some, something that you have to be very creative before you can thrive in such a business like that. Now, this will make me to connect with your twin sister, who also happens to be a very popular uh, Nollywood actress. Um, how did your parents um, feel when they see both of you going into entertainment? Because I must say that aspect of your own part of business is also, also yes, yes. Um, the thing is, right from secondary school, we went to the same secondary school, we went to, to different uni. Right from secondary school, Kenya has always been the hippie one. She's always been the, you know, she was the interim president, she was the social professor at the point in time. So along the line, they've always had that at the back of their mind. Kenny was in uni when she started modeling. Miss, I think, um, was beautiful in Nigeria. She was in her 200 level or so. So Kenny has always been out there. She's been earning money, even while in, in uni. So that to them wasn't something that, you know, it's something that at first they were like, ah, no, I wanted to be an accountant. I wanted to be a, 
the newscaster and all that, but Kenya has always been into it. So they've always had that at the back of their mind that in a way, we shall, you know. So it's something that is not new to them. Besides, in secondary school, Kenny was a, um, when we were in secondary school, she was an interim president for years. She was a social prefect. So it's always been something that it's been a long time for me. No. Now. You've not said uh, anything about your own aspect. How did they receive it when you said you wanted to venture into events? Uh, when, I, and, when I was doing it right from school, my, my, my mom, my mom has always been, my mom has always been somebody that likes uh, you going out of school. I mean, not staying out of school in total, but she has always been, she likes someone that is very productive she likes you to be doing schooling at the same time imagine it with something else because that was how she was brought up so right from school when i told my mom ah, i'm going into i want to start selling for it that was what i told her she was like ah, no i'm not even selling i said oh, not in that way because i know i couldn't merge it with school then but i want to go into uh catering of drinks and she was like oh, that would be a bad idea Besides, I could remember that the very first big job I had was we had to leave for a gym very early. We had to leave for a gym very, very early. And we left Lagos for, uh, from like 4 30 a.m. I could remember that my mom was the first person that woke me up as early as 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. The whole time when people are traveling to gym, start having your bath, start, you know. So it's always been, she's always been supporting. She was. Because she's late now. She has always been, you know, so it wasn't. So when I told them, they were like, oh, if that is so far, it's not going to stop your education. And they were okay with it. Now, something just crossed my mind. Looking at uh, the industry now, the event planning industry, we have more of um, females than the males. Yeah. What is responsible for this? Uh, maybe because I think he's. Um, it's a psychological thing. People tend to feel, oh, women are more organized. I will say that. And truly, we are organized. We are well organized. We know how, you know, even in homes, women come first. Because men is the head of the family, fine. But women, they are the ones that take care of the children. Why is it that most folks is the, uh, the mother's religion, most children go after? Because women are always, you know, in front line when it comes to taking care of the home, doing all sorts and all that, you know, so it's always been like that. Now, looking at the, the nature of the, the, the job is um, always with girls, I must say. Then I want to ask, how do you cook? I would say it's very, very stressful. I'll give it to all event planners, all vendors, not only event planners, all vendors. We all work hand in hand. No matter how small the vendor is, the vendor is a vendor. The planner too is a vendor. But it's just that the planner supersedes. Do you understand? It's, it's not something that is easy. Putting up all this today, you know, controlling the crowd is always very, very tough. Tough in the sense that you can control children, you can't control adults. Because there are some things you tell them, they'll be like, ah, Shemi Lo you know, they take it very personal. So it's it's more tough than controlling children. Children, you can tell them, we are just there, sit down there, and they will obey. But controlling an adult is not something that is very easy. So I would say, planning is very tough. I know how many calls I make today, I know how many um, noise, I know how many quarrels and all that, just to, at the end of the day, we we'll still come together. Oh, sorry, we apologize to each other. It's just for the client to be happy at the end of everything. So it's always like that. Now, a very quick one. What does it take to be a very good event planner? It takes patience. It takes experience, patience, and um, I would say patience because if you're not, if you're not coming, no, there are some clients that are very tough. When I meet tough, they are very tough. Not only clients, there are some guests that are very tough. Too. So it still takes. If you're not, if you're not, if you don't tolerate people, you can't. You can't do it because how many people are you going to fight? Are you going to be planning your uh, your party yourself? You plan for others, so you have to have tolerance. 
that's part of it as well. Uh, we are posting more, and I think I just have a couple of questions. One of it is, uh, one of them is, um, I want to believe you are, um, uh, you are, you have um, those who are learning under you. Oh, yes. Yeah, and I want to say, um, how do you go about training those who have interest in becoming an have, event um, planner? We have trainees here today. Mainly we do practicals. We don't really, we do theory too. That's a part of our etiquette and all that, how to attend to um, guests and all that. But mainly we do practicals. I mean, they come, they see how it's been done, they see how you really meet people, they see how setup is being done, you know. So, do you have a school for the training now? And what does it we require don't really to have a school. We don't really have a school, but we, uh, we have the training in our office, not a school. Okay. And what does it require to be a trainee? It under it? Once you are interested, okay. we, we negotiate on the fee because we are trying to, in as much as uh, it's something that is stressful, in as much as it's something that the trainee to get in, gain a lot, you know, when they start making money now, is another, you know, they, it benefits them more. But in as much as we are doing that, we are also trying to help people because really the situation of the country now we just have to we are all we have for each other. You know, nobody's going to stand up when we help ourselves. So sometimes we try to bend on our feet a little bit and let's see how we can work things together. But we most planners now we don't do free. We don't do training free because I realize that I've done a lot of free trainings for, you know, most especially graduates that are interested. But I noticed that sometimes when we come practicals, like here now, some people will come late, you know, some people will just be dragging because they know they are coming to work. I mean, how would you know all his entails if you don't join and see how it works? It not, it's not only just to come and set the table. Before we could set anything, we have our floor plan job. Without the floor plan, you can't do anything. You don't know where this will stay. You don't know where this will stay. You already should have it in the floor plan. So it's not just something how she be here. I should just get there, put all the set the table, set the table. No, it doesn't work that way. We need floor plan too that will be convenient for every vendor that we can showcase our businesses to. I mean, we can showcase our stand and all that. Do you understand? So in as much as we try to bring it down for people like mid price, I notice now we planners that are um, training people. People don't really appreciate what they don't pay for. They appreciate what they pay for. I mean, when you know, oh, for me to raise this money for to go for this training, it takes me a lot. So they put more effort. But if it's free, they'll be like, I will go some other time. You know, people don't take it serious. Now, finally, I want to ask how lucrative is the business? Then what advice do you have for young Nigerians who are also looking at going into event planning? Um, lucrative, it is. It is very lucrative. It is lucrative in the sense that it depends on how you can negotiate with your clients. And also, all down to how you can package yourself. That's why I, I don't leave anywhere who told you. I don't. In as, whether the money is much or the money is not. It is why you do the ones that the money is low, you get a bigger client. If you do it well, don't say because the money is not much, oh, you will just do it according to their. If you can go extra mile for them. I am somebody that I'm very detailed when it comes to plan, when it comes to my setup. I like to be very clean all my environment, I could start speaking things myself, even if the cleaners are not available at that point in time, because nobody will see that you have cleaners that are not available. They will hold you responsible for anything. So it's very lucrative if you get good clients that you can negotiate well. That's number one. Then number two, you ask me... Sorry. Your advice for... Okay, yeah. the advice is let them be patient enough. Let them try, most especially for starters. We have done that in time past. We have, we've, we've paid our bills. I mean, we've done our own. So, most especially, I see some upcoming, and they be like, ah, if they can't pay me so, so, so amount, 
I can't do it, so I can't. You can. How do you? How would people know you if you don't work for someone? Don't say because of the money. Yeah, I know you won't go all out, but if you feel you can manage, manage whatever feel, just to showcase yourself, to I mean to create awareness for people that owe oh, you. Too. I've done a job that at the end of the day, I'm talking about 14, 15 years ago. I've done a job that at the end of the day, by the time I got home, I couldn't, I myself, I couldn't boast of 5,000 naira. It was that bad. I did the job at Kara. That was a very long time ago. But those are the prices we to be paid. But now the, I mean, the story has changed. I work for big people now. Do you understand why? So, but I've paid my price. The very last thing, please. Um, this is about your fashion statements I, I must say your twin sister she's also fashionistic in fact at the point in time she won uh, the beauty pageant and the likes now i want to ask that where did you did you both get this from really um i could say i would say that i don't know i like simplicity i like to be very simple and I wear what I know it suits my stature. I wouldn't say because people are wearing this. I might see people doing it and it might not suit me. So number one thing that's what I try to do. I try to wear what suits me. I don't go out of well, because people are doing it, I will do it. Because it might not suit me. Then number two, my father was a very fashionable person. My father then would comb his hair for like 20 minutes. So exactly I what your that. sister told us yeah. when we had a child with her. Yeah. My, wow. Wow. my mom is my mom was somebody that was carefree, but my dad, wow, he likes everything. He was a very neat man. He would comb his hair for like 20 minutes, you know. So I think we took that from my dad. And I mean, this is just age. I have brothers in university, I have cousins in university, and sometimes they send me pictures, oh, this is what girls wear now, you know, which we try to, try to match, 